Welcome back to the Cooner Show on 570 WTNT. The last honest man in Washington. Uh, according to the dear leader, according to Obama in his immigration speech yesterday, Bruce Springsteen was wrong. You don't have to be born in the USA to be an American. Yeah, we're not defined by our blood or by our birth. Nope. As long as you're a natural-born Democrat anywhere in the world, if you believe in Obama, if you believe in the dear leader, come on in. Don't obey our laws. Violate our sovereignty. Violate our immigration laws. You're going to get amnesty because, hey, what is an American? An American is somebody who votes for the Democratic Party and supports Obama. You don't have to be born here. No, 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 no. You don't have to speak English. You don't have to share a common heritage. Not at all. No. That's, that's old-fashioned. That's xenophobia. That's so yesterday. That's the, that's the remnant of a racist, oppressive, imperialistic civilization. We're, we're, we're done with that now. Obama, as he said during the campaign, he's a citizen of the world. Anybody from the world can come on down and become an American. No problem. Don't, even, don't obey our laws. Don't respect our customs. Don't speak our language. Just come on down. The floodgates are open. Come on in. And if you try to enforce immigration laws like Arizona, we're going to sue you. That's right. You're the bad person for uh, uh, respecting and upholding something called the rule of law. That's the, the philosophy of the dear leader in a nutshell. And as we're losing in Afghanistan, as we have a commander-in-chief who has never once used the word victory, who has tied the hands of our commanders and our troops with the most ridiculous, restrictive rules of engagement ever, to the point that we hand out medals to our soldiers, not for killing the enemy, but for restraining fire for fear of hurting civilians. That tells you everything you need to know. Can you imagine, in the war for independence, if you had George Washington running around giving people medals, saying, oh, oh you didn't shoot a British soldier, but that's okay. Because your, your musket shot may have missed a soldier and accidentally killed a civilian. Here it is. You didn't fire. Here's a medal. That's the way to beat the British. Tell them how we understand them. How we sympathize with them. We love King George III. I'll tell you what. I'll go and bow in front of King George III. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll lick his boots. I'll bow. I'll apologize for us colonists. We're a bunch of uh, ragtag uh, primitive colonials here. Come on now. You know, I mean... Uh, They're God and guns, Jeff. God and guns. You know, we worship God. We love our guns. We're here in the wilderness. We have shacks. We have log cabins. We're not as sophisticated as you British are. Uh, you know, I'm sorry for that. We've been a little rough with the Indians here. You can maybe call us racist for that. I understand, and I'm very sorry, okay? I'm very sorry. And I believe we can create a better world together. Please, why should we be fighting you and I over independence? Because in the end, the key to America's future is to sell chickens. We're going to sell chickens in back. Oh, they were, didn't have batteries in those days, Ray. I understand. Ray's saying in batteries. That's the big strategy. Batteries and chickens. That's what Obama's telling us is going to take us to a new economic prosperity. They didn't have batteries in those days. Candles. Okay? That equivalent was candles. You let a fire a candle. So we're going to sell candles, and we're going to sell chickens. And everything is going to be fine. And we can remain friends. And even as a we can remain 13 colonies of Britain. And we're going to bow to you, King George III. Bow and apologize. We're sorry. Mea culpa. That's, that's Obama leading the Revolutionary War. And by the way, that Declaration of Independence would be a very different Declaration of Independence. They would be very, very different. Everybody, we are created equal. But it's not all men. All men, women, homosexuals, lesbians, transgendered, you name it, black, White, red, brown, woman, man, uh, human being, Martian, alien, everything. Everybody's created equal. Everything. Even animals. We have a right not to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. No. 
to be run by a socialist dictator, to free permanent health care forever, that government runs every aspect of our lives completely, that the earth should remain perpetually cool, uh, that we have to preserve the earth, and God forbid we refuse to have the Industrial Revolution here in America. That's our right, and we're going to stick to it. This would be Obama's America in 1776. Now, you tell me, how long would this colony, how long would this nation have lasted? How could we have won that war? We couldn't. Obviously, I'm being a little sarcastic, but the point is we couldn't. Tell me, how can we now win in Afghanistan? Imagine if in World War II, just stand back for a second. We announce ahead of time that we're invading the beaches of France. We even tell the Germans the exact strategy. That's what we're doing now. We're going to go for Kandahar. We're going to go for southern Afghanistan. That's what we're doing. We're going to go on the beaches of Normandy, just so that you know. And within a year, so we, we're landing June 6, 1944, okay? By June 1945, we're going to begin withdrawing our troops. Now, you tell me, how are we supposed to win World War II? We're not going to bomb your cities. We're not going to touch one civilian. I'm going to court-martial any soldier that I think has, uh, 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 has tortured or beaten up or abused a German soldier or a German civilian. If we capture any Germans, believe me, you're going to be tried in an American court with full constitutional rights. And we're not playing for the victory. There's no such thing as victory. We're not in it for victory. Now, you tell me, how could we have won World War II? We couldn't. So how can we win in Afghanistan today? This is what the dear leader has done to this country. And all I can think of, let me be very candid with you. I know it's Friday. It's a beautiful day outside. I'm looking forward to the weekend. I'm going to be going to the major Tea Party rally tomorrow. I'll have more details on that next hour. But think of the men and women who died for our freedoms. Think of the men and women who sacrificed everything for us. In 1776, in the War of 1812, in World War I, in World War II, in Korea, in Vietnam, in the deserts of Iraq and in Afghanistan. Look at all those people that have died for us so we can enjoy the greatest freedoms and blessings in the history of the world. And this is our commander-in-chief? This is the mockery that he's made of this country? My friends, it's time for him to go. And just as we lit the fire of liberty on July 4th, 1776, let us light the fire of liberty once again. And let us let everybody know, from Washington to New York to L.A. to Paris to Cairo, straight to Mecca and Medina, that here on this soil stands the freest, proudest, greatest Americans ever. And that we will never tire in the defense of freedom and in defense of our families and our civilization. Because, my friends, that is our historical mission. That is our historical mandate. That is what's made us the greatest, most exceptional nation in the world. And Mr. Obama, you said it, not me. You are a citizen of the world. Well, you know what, sir? This Sunday, we are going to celebrate the citizens of America. And either you're with us or you're against us.